All right, in today's video, we're going to pick up where we left off after defining the x, y, and z limits of every tomogram we'd like to reconstruct from each tilt series. The next step will be to set up and run template matching. From there, edit the results and then move into the subtomogram workflow. So today we'll cover setting up and running template matching. So you'll notice in my directory, I've already downloaded this map which is EMD5976. You can use some other ADS ribosome reference if you'd like. Uh, the individual features and details aren't terribly important because we're going to automatically limit this map to a low pass of 40 angstroms anyhow. Uh, and that's something you can't change and it shouldn't matter too much. You can get a fairly accurate alignment with that. And I'll go off on a little aside here to say that um, the signal in Fourier space is coherent and what that means is that even if you band pass it to say 40 angstroms you're going to align signal out further and in this case a lot of times we see even to 24, 26 angstrom. Now that in itself is fine because then you split it into the gold standard data sets and they're still independent past that point. However there's a handful of papers out there where they'll divide their data set into two and then they'll use still the same reference for both half sets filtered at say 20 angstroms and that's where things start to get sticky because if you filter to 20 angstroms it's easy to show that you can get correlation then out to 12 angstroms which really is invalidating the gold standard hypothesis then if your final resolution is only 10 angstroms there's really hardly any difference and that correlation that you've introduced from using a reference that is the same for both half sets means both half sets aren't actually independent so that rant aside um, there's no option to do that and the EM clarity you can kind of rest it easy because it makes sure that you are adhering to the gold standard hypothesis which really means your results are going to be the best that they can be anyhow. So okay rant aside we have now opened up our ribosome reference and what we need to collect about it are its dimensions and these are going to be important because this is used in three different ways in the template matching. So we'll open the drawing tools and click on the center of the image, we're on the measure option. What we want is the actual spatial dimension. So we see there in that dimension it's about 160 angstroms. A little smaller there, about 150, and a little smaller yet there. So we can find that this is about our maximum extent, and it's right around 160 angstroms. It's okay to make it a little bit more. Um, and you could check X, Y, and Z, but the ribosome is pretty globular if your protein is not globular then you want to define it as it is. And it's important to try and estimate the extent of your protein as carefully as possible, which I'll explain here momentarily. So if you open up your parameter file and scan down to the template matching parameters, this template lattice radius is what we were measuring for. So I've already set it to 160 angstroms in each dimension. For the uh, HIV gag immature capsid lattice, it's about 80. And for chemotaxis receptors, it's about 120 angstroms. And the reason it's called a lattice radius instead of just a particle radius is it's particularly important when you have repeating subunits to make sure that you set that to the minimum repeat distance or less. That way you aren't picking up uh, your neighboring peak. Okay, so the parameters that we want to set other than that are the template sampling rate. So typically you want to shoot for 8 to 10 angstroms per pixel. Here we're going a little bit higher since we're at 2 angstroms per pixel times 6 gives us 12. But the ribosome, particularly the mammalian ribosome, is pretty darn big. So in this case, about three megadaltons. So there's lots of information even at this relatively um, high sampling rate. I guess it'd be a low sampling rate. Um, if your protein's much smaller, you want to keep this smaller. And the 8 to 10 is a pretty tried and true range. Um, so that any gain you get in speed from binning much higher, uh, you pay for in terms of accuracy, which will just turn into more computational time you need to spend later. Okay, template threshold is a minimum or a maximum cutoff, so it won't, after it finds 400 peaks in this case, it will stop and return from the program. You want to base this based on an estimate, having looked at each of your tomograms, and a good way to do that is looking at the bin 10 tomograms that we made in the last step. So. This 400 is based on having split each tilt series into two. If you split it into four, you might only use two or 250. Uh, and for your own specimen, you'll have to take your best guess. And you might have to just run template matching 
and then adjust from there. So it's a good idea to carry through each experiment as far as you can with a limited data set first, and then come back and refine your parameters based on that. Uh, it's never going to be the experiment to end all experiments, so to speak. You don't really need to worry about or adjust this template target size or these bottom two parameters, but I will mention them in the written documentation so later you know what they are. That leaves us with the template angle search. So the fifth parameter is for a helical search, not relevant in this case. So we are left to worry about these four angles, and what they are are a tilt range, an increment for the out-of-plane tilt, a tilt range and increment for the in-plane tilt, or in-plane rotation, and then the azimuthal angle, the first intrinsic Euler angle that we use, is implicitly defined uh, based on these that you specify. An important thing to note is that the angular range is from negative this value to positive, so this 180 covers the 360 degree range in 12 degree steps. Likewise, here we cover from negative 180 to positive 180 in 12 degree steps. You don't need to go probably much finer than this, you could, and I want to go much coarser than 15 degrees. Um, importantly, this template matching is accurate enough that we don't typically do much of a coarse grain search in the sub-volume work. This really is the beginning of the coarse grain work, and then it's just really a local refinement. Other things you should know, this template lattice radius, in addition to um, defining where you erase things in the peak search, also is a size and dimension that's used for local normalization. So we use sliding convolution in order to go through and center the density is based on their mean and the RMS set to 1 for local areas the size of your particle and that makes the template matching results quite a bit more accurate. That's one of the reasons you want to have this set accurately. Um, and that's the most important. So we have our parameters set appropriately. We'll save and close our parameter file and that leaves us with one more thing we need to do and that is to rescale which will run emclarity rescale our map which if you use the header command you'll see that this map is at 1.05 angstroms per pixel. So that's we enter as the next and we want to scale it to 2.17 and we're going to use our GPU. If you're running on a machine locally that you're then going to push to your cluster or whatever has your GPUs, you could pass that as an argument that it's just CPU. And what did I do? Oh. Okay, so what this is yelling at me for is I didn't actually give it the output name, so we'll just call it ribo_scale.mrc, and that'll take a second to run. Um, one of the bummers with using MATLAB is you have to load all of the MATLAB libraries, which in this case takes about 20 seconds, and then it takes about half a second for the thing to actually run. But for the longer running jobs, that isn't a big problem. So now we have our scaled reference, it's at the appropriate pixel size, and it's always good to double check and make sure you did things right. So we'll open both an iMod at the same time. And what you'll see, you can toggle using the one and two keys between two different volumes, that our scaled volume is much smaller, as it should be at this lower mag. Alright, now we'll run template matching, which we call template search here in the clarity. And what arguments we need to pass to that are our parameter file, the input map, which I'm going to run this on tilt1, tomogram2, and you'll have to run this for each tomogram that you have. We give it the reference name, riboscale.mrc. We want to specify the symmetry of our sample, which is 1 in this case, and tell it explicitly which GPU to use. Now the symmetry is something that helps to deal with missing wedge bias that particularly tends to affect symmetric objects a little bit more severely. And what that does is at the end of template matching it just randomizes the in-plane rotation angles by the symmetry parameter you give it. Uh, you can run multiple instances in parallel if you have multiple GPUs and that's really all you need to know. So in the next video we'll cover how to analyze the results you get from this program and go from there. I hope that was helpful, and we'll talk to you next time.